Hello, and welcome to Star Game Studio. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who has come this far into the series. I know it has been a lot of work, and you have waited a while in between videos. This is because what I'm trying to do is quite complicated. I want to make things as easy as possible. That's why I did a bit of a redesign on the UI. Most of the work we put into the hotbar will remain intact. Some of the code, however, will not. I have a much simpler code that is not so crazy. Just bear with me and enjoy the ride. I added a cooldown bar and a casting bar to the UI. You will like this. Let's get going. I first want to move some code from the player character. I want to move the code to create the HUD on the screen. Copy and delete it from the player character along with the HUD reference variable. Next, open the third person game mode blueprint. You can find this in the third person blueprints folder. In the event graph, paste in the code and add it to the event begin play. Delete the HUD reference and make a new one. Compile, save, and see that the hotbar is on the screen again. You will get an error. If you haven't already, open the hotbar slot event graph and delete the hood reference from the code. Get the new hud reference from the variables and connect it to the setter. Compile, save, and run the game again. The error should go away. I want to change how the mouse cursor is displayed. In the last video, we used the H key to toggle the mouse cursor on and off. We are going to delete this code. If you are familiar with it, there is a much better way to do this that is similar to the way World of Warcraft does it. Go to the player character blueprint event graph and delete the code where we flip-flop the mouse cursor. Now, go back to the third person game mode blueprint and add some code to the code we added just a minute ago. First, get the player controller. Next, set input mode game and UI. Connect it to the Add to Viewport node from the Get Player Controller Set Show Mouse Cursor. Mark it as true. Compile and save. Run the game and see that the mouse cursor is always present and that you can still move the player character even with the mouse. If you don't know how to make your character move with the mouse button, you can find it at the end of my very first video. Check the description or click on the upper right hand corner of the screen. Okay, let's move on to the juicy part. In the hot bar slot designer, I want to add an overlay. We need this overlay for a progress bar to create the cooldown bar. So add the progress bar to the overlay. Let's rename some of these components. Rename the progress bar to cooldown bar. The button will be the cast button. The image will be image icon. We need to reorder these using the correct Z order so they appear on the screen correctly. Let's drag the cooldown bar to the bottom of the hierarchy so that it can be seen but not block anything else. The text can go above the cast button. Also, the overlay needs to be aligned properly. We need to click the fill horizontally and the fill vertically. 
Looks like the cooldown bar needs to be set as well. Now we are set. For the cooldown bar, scroll the percent so that you can see the bar. Let's set the bar fill type to bottom to top. Now we can change the color. Double click the fill color and opacity. I have a gray that I use. You can copy the numbers if you like. Now set the opacity to 0.5. Drag the color to the top to save it for later. Check it out and see that it's transparent in the game. You'll be able to see the icon behind the cooldown bar as it drops. If things don't look right, we can adjust things later. I want to build a data structure for the abilities. This will house things like how long the cooldown and the cast time are, among other things. Open the player class system folder. Make a structure blueprint in that folder and name it ability structure. Open the blueprint. The first thing we need to add to the struct is a name. This will be of type text. Then give it a description of the type text. It needs an icon of type texture 2D. Next will be the cooldown. It will be a float. We will probably want a cast time, also of type float. Add a cost of type float. We also need two flags, is interruptible. And requires target. You can save and close. To make the abilities work with the hotbar, we are going to build another hierarchy system similar to the one we used in the abilities series. First, we need a base ability blueprint. This will be an actor blueprint. Name this ability. This is the base or root the entire system will work on. Everything else we build from here will be a child of the ability blueprint. Inside the ability blueprint, we will add a variable. This will be our ability details of type ability structure we just made. In the details panel, you can see that we can change the settings for the ability structure. Now, we need to create a child of the ability actor. Right click and go to create child blueprint class. Name this whatever your first ability is. In my case, it is ability underscore melee hit. As a child of ability, it has access to the ability details. You can see it in the details panel. Let's go ahead and set up the ability. For the name, I will just call it Melee Hit. The description will be Level 1 Punch Ability. Skip the icon for just a bit. We will come back to that. For the cooldown, I will give it a 0.5. A Melee Hit doesn't really have a cast time, so I will leave it at 0. We will make it a cheap cost, so say 0.1. Go ahead and check Is Interruptible and requires target. 
For the icon, I'm using a 64 by 64 icon I made with Canva Pro. You can use whatever you want. All you have to do is import it into the game. Mine is a PNG, but you can use a JPEG or any of the popular extensions. After it's imported, just search for it and add it in. We can now start to add it to the ability slot. Open the hotbar slot blueprint and go to the event graph. We need to make a new variable and name it ability class. This will be of type ability and use class reference. The color should be purple. It should be instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile and save. In the event graph, find the event preconstruct. With the preconstruct, you will be able to see what it looks like in the designer before running the game. Grab the ability class and choose get. Right click and select validated get. This is how we can check to see if an ability has been assigned to a slot. Get the image icon and set visibility. This will be visible when it's valid. Duplicate this. It will be hidden when is not valid. To add the icon to the slot, drag from the ability class and get class defaults. Here, we can split the struct pin. You can see all of the details we added, including the icon. Bring the image icon out and drag from it to set brush from texture. This will go on the is valid branch. The texture pin will go down into our ability details icon. Compile and save. If you open the ability hotbar, you will see the icon in the first slot. However, if you run the game, it doesn't appear. This is because we are changing the code and need to eliminate the binding on the image component we added last video. Go to the designer tab and click the image icon. In the details panel, under brush shows that it is bound to the get brush function. We need to remove binding. Now we can run the game and hopefully see the icon in the first slot. Nope. Let's see what the problem is. I didn't change out the ability image with our new image icon. Okay, now try it. Great. In the next video, we will add the cast bar and get it working. Hopefully, it won't take as long to get it out to you as it did for this video. I apologize for the lapse in time between videos. I've been busy at home and work, and I've been redesigning. Until next time, Thank you for watching. I hope you found this valuable and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe to see more upcoming videos in this series, as well as other useful content. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror, if he is no friend to me. It's not working out.